There are times when applying a lot of bait can be a very successful tactic, but there are other times when it can really work against you and literally ruin your chances. Knowing what to do when is not easy, but I wanna share some of the insights that I've learned over many years that helped me decide when to let them have it and when not to bother. There are some times of year when I absolutely would not apply bait en masse at all, not even to see whether the fish are eating or not. In the winter, carp do not need much bait at all. At the start of April, the carp are starting to really get on the munch. They're actively looking for food and they can get through a lot of food. Because the water temperature during the winter is cold and as we go into spring, it starts to warm up, the oxygen levels are high. Cold water can hold much more oxygen than warm water. So as the water temperature warms up, the oxygen level that the water can hold goes down. When we get to the end of May, going into early June, we often see big dips in the oxygen, and this can be a disaster for the fishing. If there's not enough oxygen in the water, the fish simply cannot process any food. They can't digest the protein, and they will just shut down and stop eating. Applying bait in this situation is a really bad tactic. You're not gonna catch anything, and it can be very bad for the water quality. As an angler, it's always worthwhile asking the bailiff or the fishery manager what the oxygen levels are. Now, not all fishery managers will have an oxygen meter, but many do. And it's always worthwhile asking the question because knowledge is power. If the oxygen levels are low, it's not necessarily a complete write-off. The fish are still catchable, but what you need to do is adapt your tactics. That's the time when you want to wheel out tactics like high-vis singles or higher track singles or little PVA traps. As long as there's not a load of bait being piled in by other anglers, you should still be able to pick up fish in these situations. If you suspect that the oxygen is low and there's an aerator on site, the first thing I would do is get myself in a swim where I could target that nice, rich, aerated water. There are particular times of year where oxygen levels can be dangerously low. During a heat wave, when the water temperature rockets up to 25 or even 30 degrees, oxygen levels can suffer quite badly. So applying a load of bait during hot weather is never a good idea. Other times of year where you have to be very careful is after or during a big storm, especially during the summer, these big low pressure systems that blow through, low air pressure will actually suck the oxygen out of the lake. It can be very bad for the fishing and quite dangerous for the fish. So during the summer in stormy conditions, I would never use mass baiting as a strategy. There are a few things to watch out for when you carp fishing that could well be a sign of low oxygen levels. When oxygen levels are good, water looks light and bright and sparkly with probably a faint tinge of green to it. In these conditions, oxygen levels are probably gonna be high, so you can apply some bait if you feel it's appropriate. If you visit a venue regularly, you'll build up a picture over time of how the lake changes in color. If I'm visiting a venue and all of a sudden the lake is looking dirty or brown or discolored, then I'd be concerned about the oxygen levels of that water. It doesn't mean that you're not gonna catch, but I'd certainly stick to singles or small traps. Another visual indicator is water that looks kind of dishwater colored, a bit kind of gray and lifeless. That's a sign, again, that the oxygen levels are low. If the fish have visibly slowed down in activity, no jumps, no shows, no fizzing, then don't pile a load of bait in, hoping to reinvigorate them and draw them back into your swim, because it's not gonna happen. As the oxygen level drops, not only do the fish stop eating, 
but they stop moving. They're just not going to be very mobile. But when the oxygen level comes back, the fish will start to move, they will start eating again. But it's very difficult to know when this moment is going to be. It could be a couple of days, it could be a week. Before choosing to apply bait to any spot on any lake, I need to assess whether the carp are eating or not. Ideally, I'd want to catch a fish first. Now that might be on a single or a little trap or something like that. Once I know they're eating, then I can apply bait. If they're not eating bait, then there is absolutely no point in applying more bait. It's not going to catch you more fish. If you're lucky enough to be able to fish really clear waters, then especially if you're fishing in the margins, it should just be a case of finding a spot, applying a small amount of bait to it, and then coming back and checking on that spot. If you've got access to a boat on a really clear water, then you could use an aquascope to see what's going on down there. I've rarely been able to fish waters like this, so I've developed my own techniques for understanding whether they're eating on a spot or not. All I've got here is a two meter length of drainage tube. By cupping my hand over the end, I create a seal at one end of the tube. By very carefully opening my hand in just little, little tappy steps, I can regulate a flow of water up inside the tube. It creates a suction effect. And when the water is sucked up into the tube, any excess bait is whooshed up with it. This enables me to very accurately know whether there's any feed left on a spot or not. By routinely applying bait to spots and then testing them, I actually see them grow and change and develop. It gives me a massive amount of confidence that they're eating on that spot and that I'm applying enough bait to routinely keep them visiting. If you're fishing a marginal spot and you've got something like a prodding pole, careful exploration of that spot will tell you how hard and how clean it is. It's all about how it sounds and how it feels through the prodding pole. If you need to understand what's going on on a spot that's further out, then my go-to tool would be a leading rod. And what I mean by this is just a regular fishing rod with braid all the way through and a good sized lead. If it's within a rod length of the bank, I can simply lower the leading rod and tamp along the bottom and explore how firm the spot is. If it's further out, then I'll make a series of casts and then gently drag back and I'll get a good idea of how clean the spot is. If the spot's really nice and clean, I'll apply some bait, then go back to that the next day, assess it again, and if it feels a bit soft, then I know the bait is still there. If it feels really clean, then I know it's time to put more, or obviously, just get a rig in there. Getting your baiting right makes a massive difference. Most of my fishing energy actually goes into testing spots and applying bait regularly. I know I've talked a lot about rigs in the past, but I've got total confidence in the rigs that I use. I just don't worry. I can pick any one of my rigs and know that it's gonna catch me a carp. Where I spend my time and energy is on location, checking spots, applying bait, and making sure that they're feeding.